Hello, my name is Kate Blaha. I'm a cellist and self-proclaimed classical music nerd. And if you've stumbled across this video, then I'm inviting you to enter the Blaha Music Laboratory, which is going to be my space to explore old music in new ways. I'm excited to present this video, which should be the first of 12 in a series that I'm calling The Chaos Box. Using his iconic unaccompanied cello suite in G major, I'm going to take his music and inject a little chaotic randomness into it. My tools of choice, some scissors, a box, a glue stick, and a prayer. So I suppose I should start by saying and explaining what I mean by adding chaos into Bach. For myself, as a precocious studier of classical music and a cello performer, I've often been drawn to spending most of my time into older music, such as Bach and earlier than that. But I'm also very drawn to the 20th century, and while I can get passionate about almost any kind of music, these two eras really endlessly fascinate me. So the first seed of idea for the Chaos Box, which, if you haven't caught on yet, is a literal Bach box <laughs> that I have made here. I'm having way too much fun. And I started with an inspiration from the 20th century, specifically the 30s and 40s. If you picture Europe post-World War I, preceding World War II, and there are a lot of poets in Europe, in France in particular, and Germany, that are deconstructing reality a little bit. The devastation of World War I in Europe is so heartbreaking. So many of the artists and composers either fought in the trenches themselves or lost loved ones, mentors, family members in the trenches, and you really see it in their art. They just break down in pain, and the way I see it is they feel like the whole world has changed, and they as artists cannot go back to how art used to be before this devastation of World War I. Where my inspiration for this project comes in is a group of artists in the 30s called the Dada Artists. And I think the most famous example of someone in that circle would be Salvador Dali. So he's, of course, well known for his surrealist art, uh, but he also was part of this Dada circle, which certainly takes elements of surrealism, breaking down reality, but specifically wants there to be an element of chaos involved. The poetry that I'm interested in are works where they would take newspaper articles or different already written word 
sort of more on the mundane side usually, and they would cut up the pieces into little pieces where each one is a word. They would put it in a paper bag, they'd shake it up, and then they would re-glue it on the page in random order, the idea being that chaos wrote this poem. And you sort of end up with this quirky nonsense. I love this idea of breaking down reality and taking some of the control out of communication. So let's take that back to the classical music side. With Bach, you have a style of music that's very controlled. Although maybe I can dial that back a little bit since Bach at his roots is an improviser. So there's always an element of spontaneity, but if you've studied classical music or maybe just know a whole lot about Baroque music, you may know that Bach is the standard by which we judge most of tonal harmony to this day. It mostly having to do with the language of how he puts chords together, how he resolves tension into resolution, and all of those theory type things. We often look to Bach as the example of symmetry and beauty and just endless amounts of imagination. So as a classical musician, I've studied a lot of Bach. As a cellist, I've studied a lot of Bach, particularly the unaccompanied suites. The G major prelude for me goes back to my childhood when I started studying cello. The G major suite in particular, if you don't know it, I'm guessing there's a good chance you'll recognize it even just from commercials, from ringtones. It's one of those pieces that's just a part of our Western society music scape in the media. And also, I think most recently, I'm so inspired by Yo-Yo Ma's recent re-recordings of these. And man, can that man take a piece that he's been playing his whole life and breathe new life into it. And that's also part of my inspiration. I want to breathe new life into the G major prelude I love so much. Really, the other reason I'm starting with the G major prelude is because I really want to take a piece of music that I know so well and I've been playing since I was in middle school, so that when I cut it into pieces, like the Dada artist did with their newspaper article, put it in my chaos box, haha, and glue it back together and see what chaos wrote with box work, that I have a better chance of wrapping my brain around it because it's music that I know so well. So that's sort of where the genesis of this idea started. Chaotic, Dada poetry processes with the music of J.S. Bach. score. I'm so excited to show it to you. And man, is it wacky. I have had so much fun trying to get a clean recording of this. I don't even know what a clean recording means anymore, uh, but something that represents the notes on the page um, where hopefully I don't stumble too much and we can get from the beginning to end. There are so many interesting things that went on in this score. First of all, I noticed that because the pieces are rather large, in this prelude you have a lot in each measure, that there's still a lot of recognizable music. So for me, it's a fun combination of recognizable Bach music and something with a lot of twist in it. So that's very exciting. Another thing I've noticed is that there are score directions, such as slurs, um, I wonder what would happen if there was anything in different clefs. There's not in this piece, but it moves it all around. You don't have them in the same order. So what I've decided is whatever the score says, that's what I will do. If there's some weird new slur, I'll do that. If I do this with a different piece and there's a repeat right at the beginning, I'll just repeat whatever it says. Whatever chaos wants the score to be, 
that is what I will try to follow. It's such an interesting process, this, and it makes me so excited. Uh, I will show you as far as the titles. Um, so you'll see here we have the suite number one. So there's our title. And then we also have down here at the very end, the last piece that came out of the box is your prelude. Uh, I had a friend suggest to me once that maybe if I were performing this, that I stop at that point in the score and simply say the title. I think that would be really interesting and fun. Also, is there a page one and a page two? Maybe it needs to change every time I put it on the stand. So many possibilities. I'm excited to share it with you. The artists of the 30s, the Dada art and poetry crowd, not only wrote poetry with these processes, but there's a lot of visual art that they called photo montage. In later videos, I'm going to explore that a whole lot more because there's some amazing things being done here. But for now, I just want you to know that the idea of photo montage, which before I was familiar with that term, I would call collage, is to take images from disparate sources cut them up and put them together to form a new image, often to see those normal everyday life images in a totally new context. So photo montage, what I would also call a collage. I am going to use the term score montage for my box score and moving forward for this shake it up in the box process for music scores in the future. So score montage is the new word of the day. I also want to make a little note about the score I'm using. It is a Baron Rider score, which you'll see this one above my shoulder here. I love the Baron Rider edition. I will straight up admit that when I play the version as originally written, I change the bowings and fingerings every time I play it. I've played it so many times. Uh, I just I love to be spontaneous on that. But once I make it into the mixed up chaotic score, I'm going to try more pains to play exactly what's on the page because at that point it becomes more about the score itself. Without further ado, here is my first performance of the mixed up Bach Prelude number one with my new chaotic score. I hope you enjoy and I really hope you join me for episode two where I will be unveiling the second phase for the chaos box. Thank you. 
thank you so much for checking out the very first video in this series. And I hope that you like the video, subscribe to my channel, the Blaha Music Laboratory, and feel free to leave comments about your reactions to the score montage, how it made you feel, was it completely ridiculous? I'd love to hear what you're thinking at this point. There is one more video at the end of this video that shows me playing the original prelude before I butchered it completely by mixing it all up in case you want a fresh reference of how that's supposed to sound. And I hope that you join me for episode two. <laughs> Thank you.